In this video, I will be demonstrating the key use cases of the SAMI tool. I will focus mainly on SAM and DRP models. Any other models you might see in the tool are currently considered to be beta or for demo purposes only. So let's first log in to the tool. And once you're logged in, let's go to the scopes. We are going to create a new scope and a scope represents the focus of an assessment. It could be a team that is being assessed against a SAM model or DRP model. It could be an application or it could be a business unit, whatever you pick. So we are first going to select the base model, which is the actual framework behind the scope. It can be either SAM or DRP for disaster recovery plan. Any other models you might see are considered beta testing purposes only. I'm going to give my scope a name. The validation threshold denotes a value below which the scores are automatically validated. So typically, uh, when you're doing the evaluation, there needs to be a validation step to it. If you pick a value of zero, that means that all values are going to be validated except for a full zero score. If you pick a value of 0 0.5, that would mean that for instance, very low scores on a, on a scale from 0 to 3 for the SAM model, um, 0 0.5 is very low, then we're going to skip the validation step. I'm going to pick a value of minus 1, which means that even 0 values are going to need a validation. Now, I'm going to skip the description part, and finally, you need to select which teams will get access to this scope. By, def by default, you don't want to give everyone access to this scope, so I'm going to select the codific tech team. Now the scope is created, you need to make sure that you have selected this scope from the drop-down on the top right. So here in the drop-down, you're going to see all the scopes that, there are, that, that you can access in the SAMI tool. And here is the scope that I've just created. We're going to pick the scope now. And now in the next sections, we're going to look at the different use cases of using the SAMI tool. A quick explanation about the roles of the users. If you click on your profile name and then you go to my profile you can see what roles that your user has as a sami user you can have several roles and each of these roles gives you certain access to the tool and depending on your roles you will get different functionalities and views in the sami tool for instance if you don't have an uh, an evaluator role you are not gonna be able to evaluate a stream the same holds for a validation. So if you don't have a validator role, you're not going to be able to validate a stream. That's all about roles. Let's go back to the dashboard and start from there. The dashboard presents an overview of all streams for the selected scope. A stream is the smallest unit of assessment. So on the dashboard, you can see in which phase is each stream. Here is a... Uh, visual explanation of the different states. We always start from evaluation. The stream starts in evaluation. Once evaluated, it moves to a state in which it's going to await validation. Unless it's automatically approved, then it will directly move to validated state. After the validation, it's going to move to a validated state and a validated state is a transient state. At this point, you can either select for the stream to go to an improvement stage, an improvement state, or to move it to a completed state. Whenever you decide that things have changed, you can always bring back the stream for a second round of cycle from either of these two stages. So the dashboard basically tells you which stream is in which state, along with some additional information like scores to whom it is assigned and priority, but I'm not gonna focus on that in this video. You can also use the toggles on uh, the top of the page to see streams only in a certain state. For instance, I'm only interested in evaluation track or I'm only interested in validation track and there are currently no streams in that track. Or you can also pick like, I, I wanna only see um, streams which are assigned to my user. Let us now pick a stream for evaluation. You can either do that directly from the dashboard or you can go to assessment and then you have the 
model browser on the left side and your streams in the middle part. I'm going to pick education and guidance, training and awareness from the SAM model. Now, you can start giving your answers. So you can start evaluating the stream. And I'm going to pick some answers here. Um, the actual evaluation is not in the scope for this video. And once you have done that, you can submit the stream for validation. You can finalize the evaluation and submit it for validation. Before going there though, you might consider adding some documentation. This is sort of an evidence or a description or remarks, whatever you might have. Once you are done, you can also attach files uh, or links to external resources. You can hit save um, and then you can submit it to validation. If you forget this step, the stream will stay in the evaluation state. You can also see the scores that you have received here and the score, which is still not validated. That's why it's in red and it's on the right side. On the left side is the validated score, which is currently zero. Final interesting feature for the evaluation part is that you can still go back to the evaluation tab and then you can retrack your submission. In case you forgot something or you've noticed that you clicked the wrong answer, you can always say, hey, I just want to adjust this. Uh, you retract it. Your answers are still there. Your documentation is, of course, still there. You can edit it or you can add a new remark. It's up to you. And for instance, I'm going to say, hey, only some of them take the training. And now I'm ready. I'm going to submit it for validation. Moving on to the validation track. The idea behind the validation stage is that an expert internal or external, can go over your evaluation answers, your evaluation documentation, and decide whether you have provided answers which uh, correspond to your realities. To get to the stream, which is in the validation stage, you can either go to the dashboard, you can even pick uh, the toggles to say, I only want to see the validation track, so I only want to see streams in validation, and then you can click on the details. You can do exactly the same by going to the assessment uh, module and then browsing through the tree and through the model. As a validator, you can check the evaluation. So you can click on the evaluation tab and then you see the answers here. You can double check the documentation, whether you're happy or not. And then you can either accept or reject the validation. Let's go and reject the validation. Um, whenever you reject the validation, the evaluator, the person who is assigned to the evaluation, it's still me, but it can be someone else as well, is going to get a notification that something isn't right. He's going to also see the remark. So if you go to the documentation, you can see all the remarks and he can see, he or she can see that this is a validation remark and the validator didn't like it. So perhaps they need, we need to downgrade our answer, whatever is in the content of that validation remark and resubmit for validation. On the second run, as a validator, you get again notified, hey, this stream is now in validation. You can say, okay, I like it now. Um, and you, by the way, you can also temporarily save your validation remarks. If you are not finished in one run, you can save whatever you have to write and then go back to it. And if you like it, you can accept uh, the stream and move it to a validated state. Now, once the stream is validated, it ends up in this transient state that is called validated. At this point, the stream should be either picked up for improvement or marked as completed. In the next sections of this tutorial video, I will describe each of those options. By the way, you can always check the documentation in whatever state you are. You can see all the documentation related to this stream. You can also see the timeline. So you can see, uh, for instance, here that the stream was first validate, uh, evaluated by a uh, user. Then he retracted the uh, evaluation. He evaluated it again. It was rejected once. He evaluated it again. It was rejected for the second time. He evaluated it again. And then finally, it was validated. We don't provide any details, so the scores are not going to be shown here, but we do keep track of those scores.
Once the stream has been validated, it ends up in the improvement track. And it's actually still not really in improvement. It just says the status is validated. At this point, you can select it to go to a completed state or you can move it to an improvement uh, and, and, and reassessment process. Let's first look at the completed uh, stage and state. If you believe that your people, processes and tools are according to standards for a given stream after it has been validated, you can mark it as completed without improvement. This is an end state and you're done with this stream. So this stream is going to end up in uh, on the dashboard. It's going to end up on a completed uh, track. However, things change. And after a year or two, you might get new corporate policies or new threats that may arise. So you might want to go back and reevaluate your options for this stream. And there are two things that you can do at this point. You could either archive this stream and restart evaluation and then that would mean that you will effectively go back. So if you're in a complete state, you're going to go back to assessments uh, and evaluation state. You can also say, I want to move this stream immediately to improvement. And that is going to move the stream to an improvement phase, which is part of the next section in this video. Improvement phase is where your stream is going to be planned and scheduled for an improvement. Now, we have two improvement phases. The immediate improvement is the phase one. And in this state, you need to specify the improvement plan. Whatever your improvement plan is, you can pick a target date for improvement. For instance, I'm going to pick 30th of April. And then you can, you can always save temporary uh, edits of this uh, plan, so as a draft. You can always come back to it. A nice SAMI tool feature here is actually to specify what your scores would be after this improvement. So you're planning for an improvement and you can also say, you know what, we're going to get to at least half of the employees are going to be involved in application security, in application development training, in AppSec training. Um, and then you can say for here, it's going to be the same. And here it's also going to be the same. You don't forget to always save. So the scores here are not like in evaluation. The scores are not going to be saved unless you click on save. And now you're ready, for instance, to finalize and send your uh, plan and your whatever you picked for improvement scores. You can finalize it and send it for an actual improvement. That is now the stream is in improvement and the improvement process itself is not within the scope of the tool. So you get back to the tool whenever your improvement is done. One more cool feature of SAMI is, the, is what we call phase two improvement. So this is what we call a phase one improvement. It's your immediate short-term improvement plan. You can also go and specify your longer term improvement plan, or you can also call it the next iteration. So you can always say, you know what? I actually want to get to these scores in the long run. But my next step, my first step is to go to, yes, at least half of them, yes, for some training and keep the no here. Again, you can give a target date for the long-term improvement, let's say 1st of January, 2025. And then you, can, you should always save improvement phase two. Whenever you do this, you can also see on the scores, what is the current score? What is the improvement score after phase one? What, what we plan to do? and what we plan to do uh, as an improvement in phase two. After the improvement plan is in place, like I said, you need to go and work on that plan. Whenever you're done, you can click on finish improvement and you go back to evaluation. So the cycle goes on again here, like I've demonstrated in this sch schematics. After improvement, you go back to evaluation and then you run through the same process. So if you have improved your scores, you need to go to the evaluation state. Final words here in evaluation, you can immediately see some additional icons here on the buttons. You can also see some buttons are already pre-selected. So we're going to automatically pick the answers that you gave during the last evaluation cycle to make your life easy. On top of that, 
we're also going to show an icon that says this was your previously selected answer. So in case you say change your answer here and you pick different answers, you can always see, ah, okay, this was my answer that I gave during the last evaluation uh, cycle. You can also see the answer that was picked for improvement phase one. And you can also see the answer that was picked for improvement phase two along with its target date. You can also see a star here. The star means that this is an externally evaluated answer. And we assume that these external evaluators are, like the name suggests, external experts who are going to be very, very strict and very objective on evaluation part. In the last part of this video, I'd like to talk about target posture and target scores. As a manager, you can specify a long-term target for one or more scores. The target represents where each team or business unit needs to get eventually. This is sort of a corporate uh, baseline. Picking the right answers for the target posture is something I'm not going to talk about in this video. Let's assume that you know exactly where teams need to be based on their risk appetite. Now, let's go to target postures. And this is, for instance, the... Uh, target posture that we have set up for Codific, you can always add new target postures. I'm going to, for instance, do that. And I'm going to, for target postures, again, you have to pick the base model. And I'm going to say, hey, this is our target posture for mobile apps. Once you have added the target posture, you should, if you want to start modifying it and, and completing it, you can pick this play button here. And then you go back to something that really pretty much looks, look, looks like an evaluation. Well, it is an evaluation. As you can see, we do not have the validation and improvement uh, stages here because this is a target posture. And then you can start clicking on the answers that you believe that should be the target for the given scopes. I'll talk about that in a second. So let's say we pick these answers. So these answers are where all scopes that should comply with this target posture should be. In addition to the answers, you can also add some reference documentation. And reference documentation could be a link to corporate standards, for instance. It can also be an explanation of how the teams are supposed to get here. It could be like more verbose uh, description of what you really need to do to comply with this uh, activity or to get to that maturity level. Whenever you click save, all this stuff is saved. And then you can go and fill out the whole target posture uh, stream by stream. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to the scopes back. Now, in the scopes, you can see for each scope, there is a target posture. It can be empty. But for instance, this one has a codific baseline web as a target posture. And let's say for the one that I've created, the assessment, we can pick the mobile apps target posture. I'm going to use this one because there's more data in it. So I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to switch to this scope. And in this scope, because it has a target posture, you're going to notice an additional um, icon on the answer whenever you go to evaluation. So, so there's going to be this yellow icon, which is the bullseye, which says, this is your target answer. This is where you should be. And like I said, you can have multiple target postures, which you assign then to scopes. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please add them as comments.